It's so palpable, the feelings of fear, loneliness, anxiety, pressure, that if, if we're not careful, it will, it will lead us in a life of not living. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Lead us in a life of, of not overcoming. Lead us in a life where it lies to us enough where we will begin to believe the lie and it's greater than the truth that we see. Fear is something that God has designed for us to experience as an indicator. And so we read in the word fear of the Lord. And this is an awe, a reverence, a, a powerful um, <laughs> humility before a powerful God. It's a beautiful thing. But clearly in that context, the fear of the Lord is a good thing, a healthy thing, an indicator for us that would compel us towards walking in obedience, walking in humility, seeking His voice. Like It can be a good thing. But if you notice in the body of Christ, the fear of God is... Um, what? Lacking? Yeah, what is that? Lost, yeah. gone? Yeah. What is that? What yeah. do you mean? Perverted, twisted, yeah. Yeah. And scared of God? Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. right. But he says in his word, a fear of the Lord. Then there is another brand of a very perverse fear, a spirit of fear that brings anxiety, that brings right. us, we're scared, yeah. we're worried, we're sorrowful, we're gripped, we're paralyzed mm -hmm. to actually walking in the power. And so we see both sides really of fear. And I was realizing the other day, man, this is clearly an important um, indicator. It's something that we experience as people that God wants us to have fine-tuned mm -hmm. of a reverent fear of Him or the perverse fear we experience that would indicate to us, flee, get out of there. Mm -hmm. I don't want anything to do with that. That's not it. That's not right, right? But if you look at our culture, so much of what we consume and are entertained by and thus become like desensitized to are fear-based things. We yes. go watch the horror movie. Yep. We go consume of the TV show of the zombies and we get on, oh my goodness, the media the and news. the government and the every <laughs> yeah. influential factor. Fear is a powerful form of influence. Mm -hmm. right. And yet we just sit there and consume, consume, consume. And suddenly a perverse form of fear is building, 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 building in us. And we look around at a generation that's gripped by depression, gripped by anxiety, gripped by fear, gripped by worry and an anxious. I go speak to young people all the time. And the number one thing for there is anxiety and fear. And I'm like, what are you watching? What are you consuming? Are you consuming the word of God? Are you consuming the things of God? Are you setting before you what is good and right and pleasing unto the Lord? Are you seeking him? Or, man, the Holy Spirit one time took me through my house and just highlighted everything. This isn't it. This has to go. This doesn't glorify me. I mean, DVDs, books, music, you name it. We're like, man, it's got to go. It's got to go. Because it's actually causing a confusion and a... um dampening of my discernment of fear, of a healthy fear and of a perverse fear. Mm -hmm. And my consumption of these things that just perverse fear, perverse fear, perverse fear are adding up so much. I'm overwhelmed mm -hmm. by anxiety. I am everything. I'm picturing worst case scenario. I'm lacking trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm actually compelled by perverse fear rather than steadfast and sure and listening to the Holy Spirit. I'm trusting my emotions or my fight or flight response, you know, or like, <laughs> ah. And so, man, I would just encourage anyone listening to truly overcome fear. One of the biggest steps is to ask and take a healthy assessment right. of what's coming in my eyes, my ears, my mind, my heart, the voices around me. Again, I come back to discernment of spirits, like what's sourcing this? And is it causing confusion? Is it building up and overwhelming? And am I, is my anointing, is my clarity, is my like discernment in the spirit being dampened by these things? Well, then they've got to go. We're born with two natural fears. Mm -hmm. Fear of um, loud sounds that cause, you know, like when you see a baby Sorry. born, the, that startled effect and fear of heights. Just saying. So when healthy you, fears. yeah, they're yeah. healthy fears. So they're indicators, in mm -hmm. other words. So all the other fears, 
like fear of spiders, fear of, um, you know, darkness. Fear, those are all learned. Interesting. Mm, interesting. I think for most of us, we have grown an appetite for shadows, an appetite of that dimension. Mm. Even, you know, people are marketing um, data around our fears mm -hmm. because yes. that fear is selling mm -hmm. right. on all social media. Yep. And that's where you saw the, you know, the indignation, the anger, the uproar, the upheaval all through 2020 mm -hmm. and 2021. And they marketed on our fears mm -hmm. and earned money on yeah. off of it. Right. And so now we're, you know, kind of crossing the threshold of a new, a new era, you know, um, we're seeing that this has marked a generation mm -hmm. of kids and, and a generation of people where they're navigating life with now a learned fear mm -hmm. that our community and society has stamped on us. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing and we're ministering to that heart mm -hmm. to kind of like take off the weights, take off the chains. Mm -hmm. But I, I was... I was grown in an, um, an arena of fear where it was fear of, of being alone without someone. Mm -hmm. And I still remember, you know, like it was in, in the year, I think I was like 22. I broke up with my boyfriend. I was walking out this anxiety, which is a form of fear. They're close cousins. Mm -hmm. And so this anxiety came in that I couldn't even leave my apartment. I couldn't leave, you know, to go to school. I couldn't leave to go attend my music classes. I couldn't leave to go to a, a recital. So because I was so afraid of leaving because something awful would happen. Mm -hmm. Another thing. Mm -hmm. And when that became greater in my own sight, I, I still remember how the Lord reached me mm -hmm. just to go back home. He just said, Diana, go back home. I had this wonderful opportunity to go somewhere else, but the Lord led me to go home. And little did I know my mom was praying for me to get home. Wow. wow. So when I got home at the age of 23, that's when I met the Lord. Wow. 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 So I think for most of us, we don't understand. It's so palpable, the feelings of fear, loneliness, anxiety, pressure, that if, if we're not careful, it will, it will lead us in a life of not living. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Lead us in a life of, of not overcoming. Yeah. Lead us in a life where it lies to us enough where we will begin to believe the lie mm -hmm. and it's greater than the truth that we see. Yeah. 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 Right. And so for me, it took the Lord to really save me, to mm -hmm. save me and salvage, salvage me and then dust me off, say, I love you, I love you. Yeah. You have mercy, grace, grace. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And I felt so clean and yeah. I felt so fresh and I felt like I, like I was brand new, right. the sense of being brand new mm -hmm. and then walking it out like every day and then consuming the word of God mm -hmm. and, and believing everything that he says about you. And those are real emotions, but there are believers that have believed for a long time and yet have been lied to about their fears, the anxieties, yeah. their yeah. worries, and their pressures. Yeah. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.